Hello and welcome to the ID8 software informational blog post on automating document issue records for Revit projects using ID8 BIMLink and Excel macros. My name is Sash Kazaminijad and I'll be your host for this demonstration. Before we get into how to use the DIR Excel file, it is important to take a few moments to review some of the revision basics within Revit. Revisions in Revit is the process of recording changes to the documentation set after sheets have been issued, revisions can be added at any point in time to a Revit model. Revit offers two revision numbering options, revisions per project and revisions per sheet. Revit allows the user to customize the numbering scheme based on the project and owner requirements, such as numeric, alphanumeric, and even no numbering option as well. Revision clouds can be placed directly in a view or on a sheet, but not in a raw schedule view. Once a revision cloud is added, the revision information will appear in the revision schedule that is part of the title block. Any changes to the revision information will be propagated throughout the project. If revision clouds do not exist on a sheet, but the revision information still needs to appear in the title block, say for submittal purposes, then you can enable this feature by clicking on the Revisions on Sheet options within each sheet view. You can also use IDA BIMLink to expedite this process by using Excel to edit the Revisions on Sheet in bulk. Revit only allows you to make these edits on a sheet-by-sheet -sheet basis. Having to do this manually for hundreds of sheets can take a significant amount of time. As mentioned earlier, revisions can be set up on a per-project basis or per-sheet basis. Revisions per project numbers revisions according to the sequence in the revisions dialog box. By default, if the numbering is set to numeric, then the sequence and revision number will match. Sequence 1 will equal revision 1, sequence 2 will equal revision 2, and so forth. Once you issue, say, revision 1, you cannot have any future revision 1s because it already has been issued. You will have to unissue revision 1 if you want to add an additional revision 1 or edit an existing Revision 1 cloud. Revision per sheet numbers clouds relative to the sequence of other clouds on a sheet. For example, you could have a Sequence 5 and a Revision 1, but not a Revision 5, if Sequence 5 is not currently issued and a sheet or view has its first revision. In other words, one sheet or view can have a Revision 1 on a particular date, and another sheet can have a Revision 1 with a different date even though the sequences for each of the revision ones are different. For more information on the differences between revisions per project and revisions per sheet, be sure to check out the Revit help file. And finally, it is always important to recognize that your numbering scheme will change if you decide to switch numbering from per project to per sheet, or vice versa. It is always important to understand these implications before doing so. One of the issues with reporting revision information in Revit is that a Revit schedule will only report the most current revision on each sheet, not all of the revisions on each sheet. In other words, there is no built-in solution to schedule every revision on each sheet. While this information may work for some people, some owners and jurisdictions require a schedule that reports each sheet and each revision that is on those sheets. And because there is no built-in solution in Revit, Many people have created dummy schedules in Revit utilizing shared parameters or have manually entered this information into an Excel spreadsheet, which is error prone and of course lacks coordination. In order to avoid having to create dummy schedules with shared parameters or manually entered values within Excel files, ID8 software has come up with a nice solution to automate this process. Let's have a look at how to use ID8 BIMLink to aggregate your revision information and then use ID8 Sticky to bring the formatted Excel schedule back into Revit to place onto Sheets. ID8 software has created an Excel macro template that is designed to work with a couple of predefined links within ID8 BIMLink. Using the template that is in its as-is state, you can simply export out the revision on Sheet and revision links from within BIMLink and overwrite the sample tabs in the Excel macro template. Once completed, you can open the Excel file and see the new results. If you are interested in making some minor edits to the Excel macro template, you can certainly do so. For example, I modified the header of the Excel file so it displays my company information and project information as well. 
I even added some color to the cells to make them stand out a little bit more. I even changed the formatting of the text. Let's have a look at how to use the Document Issues Records Template, or DIR for short, utilizing IDA BIMLINK and Sticky, if you'd like to import the formatted DIR back into your Revit model. The ID8 DIR template is a macro that is designed to read the information from the revisions and revisions on sheet tab and generate this tabulated schedule. This information can be brought in via ID8 Sticky if you're interested. Otherwise, it can be printed out or used for other purposes. For information on how to use this DIR and set it up, I recommend you visit the Instructions tab. There's some good information in here on how to set it up. You can make some minor formatting changes to the DIR spreadsheet ahead of time. For example, you can edit the font style to match your company standards. You can also swap out this stock image that we provided here with one that represents your project or your company's logo. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and change the font. I'll select everything in this view. I'll change it from Calibri to maybe a Swiss font. In addition, I may be interested in changing this information to a different color. Perhaps I want to change the fill to an orange color. You can always reformat this after the DIR has been regenerated. I'll go ahead and change this to ID8 software. I'll go ahead and save this template. And I'm going to close it down. And then I'm going to return to Revit. I'm now in the Revit file that I'm interested in exporting the document issue revision information back to that macro template. I'm going to use BIMLINK for this process. I'm going to select BIMLINK and I'm going to bring up two of our sample link files. I'll click on load sample and I'm going to scroll and look for the revisions on sheet and revisions links. I'll go ahead and hit next and I'll hit done. And I'm going to load up one more sample. These two links are going to be exported to that DIR to regenerate the information. Again, the information that we provide in this template has nothing to do with this particular project. We want to get the information from this project into that DIR template. Let's have a quick look at the revision on sheet. I'm going to go to the properties. And by default, we've set it up to show the sheet number, sheet name, and some of the sequencing. I'm going to go ahead and move this one up since it's out of order. If you are interested, you can add additional parameters to the linked properties and that information will be exported to the DIR template. I'm going to go ahead and just add one more here. I'm going to add the drawn by. I'm going to go to the revisions and take a look at it. The DIR is going to use this information to generate the revision table as well. We're going to leave this one untouched. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export these two and replace the tabs that are in the DIR so that it can generate a new schedule. I'm going to go ahead and hit export. I'm going to go to my DIR folder and right now it's under the Excel workbook. I need to change it to the macro enabled. Once found, you'll go ahead and select it and hit save and you're going to be prompted to overwrite the existing worksheet. I'm not going to open the file yet because I need to export the revisions into that file as well. I'll hit done. I'll select this one here and hit export as well. I'll come back down over here and pick the macro enabled and I'll go ahead and select it. Now that these two have been exported out, I'm going to overwrite this one and now I'm going to open the file. You can see over here it still says ID8 software. You can see my formatting is over here. I may want to remove the fill from this one here. But at this point, what you can do now is you can go ahead and edit some of this information. For example, perhaps I want this to say drawn by. I may use the format painter here and make this one match as well, and maybe make the column a little bit wider. If I come up to the setup tab, you can see the information from here propagates over to here. In addition, if I go back to the setup tab, some of this information updated because it was able to read the information from the DIR. Scrolling down here, this is an absolute match to what's in my Revit project. Let's go back to the Revit project and look at sheet A100. 
I should see a no numbering for issued for review and I should see three numbers for RFIs 1, 2, and 3. Let's go ahead and go back to the Revit project to confirm this. I'm now back in my Revit project. We're going to go to A100. Looking at sheet A100, you can see I have RFIs 1 through 3 and a no number for the issued for review. Back at my Excel file, this has been confirmed. Let's see what happens now if I go ahead and add one more column through BIMLINK and re-export it out to this particular DIR. I'm going to go ahead and save this file and close it down. I'm now going to go back to Revit. I'm now back on my Revit file. I'm going to launch BIMLINK again and the revisions on sheet stays here. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to go ahead and add one more column after drawn by. Let's go ahead and add checked by. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see the information down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now I'm going to export this. I'll go ahead and hit Save. And I'm going to overwrite this one. I do not need to re-export this one because I have not added any additional revisions to my project. If you add or remove revisions to this project and you want to update the DIR, be sure to export out those revisions as well. You can see that the drawn by and the checked by has been added. Again, you're free to delete what information you want to. So for example, this could say checked by. And again, you can do a format painter if you'd like to, to format this information. I'm going to go ahead and save this file and close it down. And as an option, you can now take this information and bring it into your model by using ID8 Sticky. Let's go ahead and go back to the model and have a look at it. I'm back in my file and I'm going to go ahead and create a new sheet. I'm now going to launch Sticky. I'm going to go to Create. I'm going to find the Excel file. I'm going to use the DIR worksheet. And if you look over here, this is the information that was generated from the setup tab. We have seven pages by default. You can certainly add your own if you want, but the length of the pages were determined from the setup tab. We had decided on 30 rows per sticky. We'll go to page one, and then we'll hit close, and you can see we have a sticky now for the very first page. This one goes to sheet A404. We'll go back to Sticky. We'll go to Create. We'll pick that Excel file again. And this time we're going to do page 2. And we'll leave the Sticky name as is. We'll hit OK. We'll hit Close. We can also align these if we'd like to. And as you see, it starts at A405 and goes to B120. Thank you once again for visiting this informational blog post on Automating Document Issue Records for Revit Projects. To learn more about ID8 BIMLINK and our other software offerings, be sure to visit our website at www.id8software.com.